They've done a very neat job. You can see that the side pods are lovely and slim, as you would expect. Um, and I think that the key thing, which we saw from a lot of the teaser pictures that had come out um, before the car's launch, is that they've changed the roll hoop design a little bit in terms of the bodywork that goes around it. And they've created a bit more cooling inlet area on the roll hoop, which means that you've got a much bigger cooler somewhere behind the engine. Uh, probably for things like ERS and hydraulics and the gearbox, but probably much more about um, the the uh, ERS cooling. And that means that the side pods can be much smaller because much like when we went back to the size zero McLaren a few years ago, they're trying to put all of the cooling on the centre line, which allows you to have a much smaller side pod. And that's especially important this year because the regulations changing the floor is they really don't want the side pods encroaching onto the floor area. They really want to be able to manage that area as best they can. That's the one area that they've had to change, which will be the back of the monocoque and the floor of the monocoque under the fuel tank. The battery will be effectively a different shape and size, but in terms of overall volume and where everything's placed, everyone puts everything in a fairly compact unit now with the electronics and the battery under the fuel tank it's actually not technically under the fuel tank it's up under the chassis with a, a solid piece of carbon structure between them and then the fuel tank above it always sounds a bit worrying when you say the batteries in the fuel tank um, so i don't think that really is a big issue everyone's fairly standard with that now but what they will have to have done is to accommodate the new Mercedes engine. This is the new Mercedes engine. Um, so what we see on the Mercedes, oh, sorry, on the McLaren here will be reflected somewhat in what we see on the Mercedes uh, in a couple of weeks when that unveils, which is this much more bulky sensor line setup because we understand that Mercedes have changed their inlet plenum and part of their charge cooling and where they're placing the cooling and McLaren have followed that. So I think much more the work for McLaren has been accommodating that and then fitting the compressor uh, into the back of the uh, chassis, which is obviously quite different to the Renault package that they've been running for the past few years, but not too different to what they had back in the Honda days. So they've got some they've got some experience of all of this. You know, there's a lot of work there, but I don't think it was any work that would be a problem for them. It's just simply the task that they've got to get through. Um, the problem they have though, I mean, they've obviously jumped to what we have to argue is the best engine on the grid. So that's a benefit, but they've had to spend all their development tokens. And the way the regulations work this winter is you can only change one or two things by spending two development tokens. Everyone else will be spending that to improve things like suspension or aerodynamics. McLaren have had to spend theirs simply fitting the engine. So their hands have been a little bit more tied in terms of what they've been able to do to add performance to the car other than actually getting a better engine in the back of it. They've had to make some changes to their gearbox because, again, the gearbox is part of the where the turbo sits on the engine. Uh, as much as a lot of the, the bolts will line up, there's lots of other packaging concerns that you've got around that area and some people are actually saying that they were going to run the Mercedes gearbox um, looking at it I can categorically say they're running the McLaren gearbox uh, certainly in terms of the rear casing and the rear suspension um, because the pull rod's in a completely different position to what it would be on the Mercedes gearbox so that all appears to still be a McLaren setup which is probably what you would have expected really McLaren still are an independent team they want to design things like their rear suspension they want to design things like the gearbox casing to get the stiffnesses and the weights and everything right so that's very much down to McLaren and as I say rightly so now um, it's clear that um, our Akebono aren't listed as a partner. They're not listed on the technical parts of the cars. It just says brakes rather than Akebono brakes. So I would guess that they've gone to Brembo. Um, lots of speculation as to why this may be. It could be some tie-in with the Mercedes brake-by-wire system, which I doubt. It could be something to do with um, what uh, Daniel Ricciardo likes in terms of brakes. The caliper itself, I, I don't feel, gives you that much difference in feel. It's much more about the material that you use for the pads and the discs that gives the driver the feel and the confidence. So I think McLaren have already been running Brembo uh, material as far as we know. So I don't think that's really gonna be uh, an issue here. Um, but we do know that Formula One wants to move to a spec brake supplier. Maybe Akabono wanted to draw their development to a close and uh, McLaren wanted to get on the ladder with Brembo early. So this just seems like um, a relatively small change. But again, it's one of those little things that we notice um, as you know, uh, the years uh, change and you just see partners come and go. And it looks like they've got these little fins in front of the rear tires. 
because again the rear floor now has been tapered and the bottom of the brake ducts have been trimmed back as well so they're much narrower you can actually see the floor through the rear brake ducts now whereas before you couldn't see anything through them because they've been trimmed back so i think a lot of the detail there uh, won't be seen yet um, i think things like the front wing rear wing um, the barge boards they will all change massively and we have to remember at this point that the first test and indeed the first Grand Prix is a long, long way away. That's a lot of wind tunnel time and a lot of development time for the teams to actually get their final specs. And I think certainly having the Melbourne Grand Prix from a, a team perspective, at least, has been an advantage that they've been given this extra development time to look at this crucial area of the floor as it reaches the rear tyres. But McLaren already, as I say, a couple of little five centimetre tall veins, which is as high as you can go in that area, have been evident. A rest of the, around the rest of the car, not much else has changed um, in terms of hard changes that we would expect not to change. So I think the nose tip looks a bit different. Some of the mirror details look a bit different. The big change really, as I say, is the side pods and the cooling around the roll hoop and then the top body being much bulkier behind that um, as part of the cooling package change for this year. Um, it won't be until very late in testing, which obviously is just a matter of days this year. And even maybe not some of the first Bahrain races, maybe it may be even a bit later before we see some of the real meaty 2021 aero actually hitting that car.